Kakashi is an extremely powerful cavalry hero. He's not only great in the open field, but he's also a part of the meta cavalry rally. You use him as the primary, Emrys as the secondary, and you shred. So in this video, I'm going to break it down. We'll review why his skills are strong, even though he's a peacekeeper. We'll talk about good talents for Bakshi. We'll talk about the good pairings with Bakshi. And last but not least, the best artifacts. Let's get started. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskool Gaming, and today's video is sponsored by the makers of Call of Dragons. And I was really suspicious of Bakshi being particularly good, because when you compare heroes in this game, one of the things you look for is for all of their skills to be relevant in player versus player combat. And at the end of the day, if you can't beat other players in the open field, if you can't beat other players when it matters, they could completely uproot your settlement, take your resources, and kill your troops. You need to be able to fight in the field. Now, the thing that I find so interesting, as I was saying, is that Emrys has four skills, all relevant in the open field. But Bakshi is a peacekeeper, but somehow he's still super powerful anyways. So in this video, we'll talk about why that is. Reviewing his skills, going over the talents, and so on. And let's start with the skill review now. Of course, you can use the timestamps in the description to jump to whichever part you want to hear. The first skill does 1,400 damage factor and gives you 20% hit points for 5 seconds. Okay, not bad. 1,400 damage factor is pretty good, and the HP boost is crucial. Cavalry are so stupidly squishy, it's crazy how quickly they take damage and their numbers drop off from there. The second skill is peacekeeping, 30% peacekeeping damage. This is the skill you want to avoid. I'll talk more about that in a second. The next skill, all cavalry units in Bakshi's Legion gain 5% hit points or 10% at max and 20% physical attack. From here, the fourth skill is a doozy. When in battle, your Legion gains either Ascension, increasing your attack and defense by 30%, or Passion, giving you Rage Accumulation Speed of 30%, or Spirit Siphon, launching a normal attack grants healing, healing factor of 200. Every 10 seconds, you'll get one of these effects lasting for 5 seconds. I could be wrong, but I believe you need to be in combat for 10 seconds before this will even trigger at all. So I feel like, again, I would have to double check that, but I often don't start fights with this buff if I remember correctly. I can't I can't ima remember a time where I ever started a fight and had the healing buff running. So it could be that this skill is only good after you've been in combat for a little bit. The next skill um, makes it so that your active skill does 100 more damage factor, which is really an unexciting boost but also gives you 10% more hit points, so 30% total for 5 seconds. The Awakening skill here is certainly a boost, but it's not so powerful that I'm like, wow, you have to get this hero all the way maxed. There are heroes where that's the case, by the way. For example, if we look at Nika, okay, her Awakening skill makes it so that when she launches a normal attack, they have a 50% chance to inflict hero skill damage, physical factor 500, if the target has 50% of units remaining, and that happens every two seconds, that is a transformative effect. The effect on Bakshi is not transformative, so you don't have, a, have to have a maxed to get great value. I have him at 5525. He's available both from the Wheel of Fortune, uh, also in this game called the Lucky Spin, and he's uh, available from the Gold Keys, but he seems to be super rare from the Gold Keys. Now, given that Bakshi's second skill is peacekeeping, there's an obvious choice that you have to make here, which is that you want to unlock and max the first skill. Then and only then do you apply stars until you've unlocked all of his other skills. Then and only then do you apply more skill points to Bakshi. You basically want to create a situation where you avoid skill points going into this second skill because it doesn't help you in player versus player combat. And if it doesn't help you in player versus player combat, I really don't care about it. It's completely irrelevant to me. And maybe that's just based on my experience having cutthroat fights from the start of every season till the end of every season. But like, man, I, I put my weight in gold in PvP related stuff, okay? So that's the skill set on Bakshi, and he's great. 
Now, the reason that people think he needs to be the primary, though, is actually his talents. Now, of course, getting the health buff sooner when he's the primary is good. But the the skill tree is the reason that he's used in the meta rally. And I will show you why that's the case. I am currently working on these talents now. Uh, I am in season one plus stars reignited. So levels after 50 have to be gained from PVP, which is why he's a little bit lower than some of my other heroes here. Uh, if you're going to use Bakshi, you're going to go in and you're going to take the March speed, the health, and of course the mighty power talent, which gives you 2% more hero skill damage, and you have a 10% chance to gain 20 extra rage. Cool. From here, I like taking the extra hero skill damage, but I could see you easily making a justification for going for hit points because cavalry are so squishy. It's actually at times very frustrating. You have to play cavalry as ambushers. If you ever played World of Warcraft, they're kind of like a rogue, you know, like they do big damage, but if they get caught out, they get wrecked. That's cavalry for you. Uh, from here, I like generating extra rage. More rage means more damage. It also means I have a hit point buff running sooner. So I took the extra rage from normal attacks. I also took the extra rage whenever I cast a rage skill. Now, the interesting thing about cavalry units is that most cavalry units, unless you're using the spring wardens, then it's your flying unit. Uh, but most cavalry units have an effect over here, okay? Uh, that when you charge an enemy once every 12 seconds, after colliding with a ranged unit, you gain a thousand rage. So you instantly get your rage cycle to pop off using your active skills, which is super powerful on Bakshi. And for that reason, it's all about generating rage and also high skill damage. So because I'm instantly using skills, I'm going to regenerate my rage faster for the next skill cycle, which is really cool. Uh, from there, I decreased my normal attack stats. Okay, so I do 4% less attack, but increased my hero skill damage by 8%. Really, really good. Then I went in and said, hey, when I launch a normal attack, I have a 10% chance to grant, again, hero skill focus, increasing my hero skill crit rate by 10% for five seconds. And also I deal 15% more hero skill critical damage. I think those are the right pick, although it could be that for cavalry, because they don't actually have a lot of things that are increasing your critical chance, it could be that going for other talents yields you more DPS. Let me give you an example here. Velen gives you hero skill damage dealt boost. So if you can get more hero crit rate, you're doing some really cool stuff. And he gives you more hero crit rate bonus, which means if you can get more critical damage, that's really good, right? There's a lot of synergy with, you know, Velen and also the skill tree, which you're going to get from Lilia. I don't think that same synergy is exactly here with Bakshi and Emrys. They, they don't exactly have things in here um, that are, oh, well, actually, I take it back. You get a little bit of hero skill damage boost. It's it's just, um, I don't know, if you get more crit rate, that those talents are more synergistic. That's what I'm trying to say. They're still good, and that's what I went with. If I didn't go with these, what would I take? I mean, you're not increasing your healing, okay? I don't, I don't, when you gain a buff effect, I don't know, man. Um, taking less hero skill damage is kind of interesting. And, you know, encouraging dance when you get attacked, you generate more rage. I mean, there's a path you could take here, but I still think this top part of the tree is probably better. Now, from there, I immediately went into the cavalry tree and I wanted to get 15% march speed. Obviously, that's insane. And I started to put my points into cavalry attack. And then I was like, you know, I just dislike how squishy my cavalry are. I know I'm trying to just ambush people, but I'm going to take less hero skill damage, and that's what I want. So I've started splitting up. I know it's not optimal, but it's not that big a deal. Um, and the next thing I'll take is probably more rage right over here, high spirits. If you wanted, you could take intimidation for more glass cannon, pure damage build. And then from there, I really like perfect ferocity. Your legion gains synergy when they enter battle, increasing hero skill damage dealt by 15% for 10 seconds. Obviously, that is powerful when you're charging in and your rage bar fills instantly because you ambushed a ranged unit. So I like perfect ferocity way more than I like steady pace. When you leave uh, a city, you gain a shield, eh, whatever. That triggers only once every 60 seconds. I'm not excited about that. Not at all. But I was excited about perfect ferocity, okay? Now, if you are still leveling up, with Bakshi, 
Then what I did is I used a peacekeeping build. Um, so I started up the peacekeeping tree, and then once I got to level 50, I used a talent reset, and I switched over to the skill tree, okay? Now, I don't think there's a lot of reason on Bakshi to go deep into the cavalry tree. You can make yourself take less counterattack, deal more damage to marksmen. I mean, that's pretty decent. You can give yourself a haste boost when battle ends, but I feel like battles rarely are ending and then I want a haste boost. It's more like I need the speed to get out of combat. Uh, gaining keen after I defeat a legion is something I'm not interested in. I have to take the legion all the way to sad face. I do like taking less damage, but it's only while you're marching somewhere. So I just felt like overall the rest of the cavalry tree was not good but the first part of the cavalry tree has some disproportionately good uh, talents i mean even just five points for 15 percent of march speed is really good and obviously you want speed on your cavalry even though they are fast already now in terms of pairings the meta pairing here is to go bakshi primary and emrys secondary the emrys primary is an interesting one when you take advantage of his mobility talents and you're jumping through resource nodes and you're ambushing, but even then, I found the Bakshi to just be the superior combo with your cavalry. And if you're doing an epic pairing, you could go and do Bakshi with Al Alistair, okay? The interesting thing about Alistair is that he has area of effect damage. Area of effect damage is powerful, but let me tell you something. When you're ambushing somebody, you want to typically do single target damage because when you ambush someone, they'll attack you back, but nobody else. Even if they have friends standing right nearby, if the player isn't actively looking at their account and taking those actions, nothing happens, okay? So you really kind of want to just do single target damage because if you hit multiple targets with area of effect damage, then they start auto attacking you back even if the player is not at the keyboard. You know, they're AFK, they're not paying attention. So I think that the area of damage is a cool idea. And I do think that Alistair's kit overall is very, very, very pushed for an epic hero. I mean, you're talking about 10% hit points, 10% attack, 30% uh, defense. Oh, this is hitting cities. Okay, bit of a rip. But um, over here, you get a counterattack boost, rage accumulation speed boost, and also, dude, cavalry units up by Alistair deal 10% more normal attack damage and take 10% less damage. I think his kit's really good. Like, for an epic man, he is impressive. However, the choice you could make if you are a whale is to go Bakshi with Hosk. And the interesting thing here is that Bakshi actually buffs himself a lot, and that has a lot of really good Hosk synergy in a way that I wouldn't have expected. Hosk wants you to buff yourself, which increases your normal attack crit rate and your counterattack crit rate, okay? And that stacks. So Bakshi buffs himself over here with his hit point boost and over here. This counts as a buff to your Legion. So he actually has several ways that he's buffing himself. It's a thing you could do if you wanted to like run multiple cavalry marches. You get a Hosk, you know, Bakshi Hosk going. You can get an Emrys with Alistair. There are other cavalry combos you could try out, but I think that's the, the, some of the more interesting ones. Um, the final combo I need to mention is Bakshi with Thea. Now, how would you use Bakshi with Thea? Well, you do use Bakshi as the primary, but you use Eagles if you're Spring Wardens, and then you have flying units. Now, even though Bakshi doesn't fly, okay, you will get the benefit of Thea's extreme speed. Do I generally like Thea in a cavalry march? I would have said no, except I am the Spring Wardens, and I am running around with Eagles, and I am doing absolutely disgusting things. Now, in fairness... I am using a full flying march when I run around with eagles, okay? And you can see here, I'm using Thea and Fragar. They both fly, and I have put the most experience onto them from PvP. That means I have defeated more players with my cavalry, my eagles, than any other unit, even my mages. And my mages are scary, bro, so... Thea does some cool stuff with eagles, okay? Do I think that Bakshi with Thea is the best way you could run the combo? No, I don't think so. Do I think that would make your cavalry more tanky? And if you have eagles, super speedy? Yes, yes it would. There are technically other combinations you can do. And I know this feels a little bit like reaching, but you could sort of do Eliana, although I don't really love it. She's very tanky. 
You could definitely do Craig, which is like really weird, but he only sort of cares about marksmen. He gives you 20% march speed when a battle ends, which is really good. 10% uh, hero skill damage boost, 10% attack. If you had flying units, you'd get 10% defense. So if you used eagles, you'd also get the defense boost here. Um, and and you know, once you awaken him, it's like actually a lot of damage and it's really weird and scary. I think that covers all the combos, okay? Um, the meta combo, however, is, you know, you get a moderate amount of skills into Emrys. You could say 5511 for the sake of argument. And then a moderate amount of skills on Bakshi, 5151, ideally, okay? And then boom, like you, you stick to those legendary cavalry and you run around with them. And you have a damn good time. Cavalry are arguably some of the most fun I've had in Call of Dragons, hands down. And of course, flying cavalry with an X evolution. And for that, I don't even use Bakshi, GG. Um, but when I am using Bakshi in the field, and I do like using Bakshi in the field, uh, I use the Spring Blades. This has got to be the best artifact. The damage is just too steep. It does take a little bit of time to actually kick in all the damage, but I have enjoyed my Spring Blades. I do think the targeting mechanism for these is a little bit suboptimal in the fray of combat it's very easy to not realize you have targeted slightly out of range for your unit which means your spring blades don't actually send so you just need to be very mindful of where you click to actually get them to go but once you get the hang of your spring blades i think that's your best cavalry pick from there you have several really good options i mean really good i have used the kingslayer extensively and i love this thing it's Available from the regular artifact keys, and it freaking crushes, man. Big damage, and there's a chance that you instantly finish an enemy. Love to see it. In addition, I also really liked the Sorlin's Blade. Now, the Sorlin's Blade was available not only from the regular artifact keys, but also from the Battle Pass in Season 1. And I ran around with the Sorlin's Blade and enjoyed the extra march speed. Okay, it gets base uh, march speed, okay, from the star level which is really nice. I've got mine uh, four stars. Yeah, that's 18% march speed. Yo, that's nice, okay. But I also liked the moderate damage that it has, even though that damage drops pretty substantially for each additional target that you hit. You also gain a haste boost when you activate it, which is pretty cool. I loved the Sorlin's Blade. Any of these artifacts, and you are gonna have so much fun with your cavalry. Now, you can't just run in like a bozo. Cavalry are not frontline units. They are as I was saying earlier, like a sabotage, backline, hit your enemy when they're not paying attention, sort of a unit. You abuse your speed to abuse the enemy, okay? Um, now, there are other choices that you can use here that I think are suboptimal. And people will swear by some of these artifacts, but I will not. One of them is the Storm Arrows. I think they're not very good. I'll just say it. I don't. You need many levels on this thing to actually teleport a meaningful distance. And the real problem with Storm Arrows is they stop all forward movement. So you lose one to two seconds because you need to retarget immediately after you teleport in the direction you actually want your marches to run. So literally, the second you've teleported, your units will stop moving. And so you lose a second or two of time. Not cool. Um, I don't like the Storm Arrows um, compared to your other options. In addition, the Wolf... Woman of Healer. This is a weird one that ports you in and then after a period of time or when you choose, it warps you back. I think this is cute. I don't think this is good. It's giving you cavalry hit points, which like, okay, it's kind of cool to get more tanky, but the thing you're really trying to do, in my opinion, okay, is not to necessarily be more tanky, but to blast out big damage and then get out of the fight if you need to. The epic tier, I suppose you could use uh, if you wanted. There's one artifact. Uh, here we go. The Hail of Arrows. This is the one. 1,500 damage factor. Epic. It's in a circle. I like area of effect damage. Centaur Bow would be the pick. It gives you cavalry unit defense and legion defense. I'm not a huge fan of defense as a stat, but I think it's a fine choice. Now, there is one other thing we need to talk about, okay? And I've got my cavalry on the field, so I can show this to you now. I am the Spring Wardens. And if you choose the Spring Wardens, the weirdness here is that your cavalry unit is an archer. So your cavalry unit's range is actually much shorter 
than regular range units. And I really shouldn't be attacking Darklings now because like, bro, we're kind of burning some flags and stuff. But just to show this to you, okay, I will show it to you. Um, I'll show you two things here. One is going to be the, the shockingly short range on the Spring Warden Cavalry. Um, and the second thing is going to be the spring blades, because I think they're super powerful, but you do need to see their range is very short. So you can see here that when I charge into battle, I am a ranged unit here, okay? So that range, though, is really short. Look how short that is. Compared to a regular range unit, it is a really small range. And you can see the spring blades range is really short, too. Now, you can click outside of the range and see it. Oh, did they patch this? I think they patched it. Yo, I think they like literally just patched this. You used to click outside of the range of the spring blades and it would tell you you clicked out of range, but it was really hard to tell. But those controls actually were really good. I, I think they literally, with the patch that went in today, just put that in the game. L little sneaky patch. I, I don't know. Uh, that was awesome. I'm very happy with that change. I clicked out of the range and it worked, but you can see the range for that's pretty small too. Okay, so what, why am I telling you this about these cavalry? Because I have tried to use the cavalry as a ranged unit as a part of my murder ball, okay? Bakshi cavalry ranged unit. And the problem is that when you go attack something, the cavalry will step in front of all other ranged units. They have less range than mages by a ton. It's like one third the range of a mage and like half the range of an archer. So you're, you know, if I, let's say I'm shooting trauma over here, right? My cavalry will be over here. My regular marksman will be over here. Okay. And my, my mage unit will be like way back over here. Okay. So the problem with this is that I have found you really can't use cavalry archers like regular ranged units. You can't murder ball with these because what happens is the enemy ball targets your cavalry. Your cavalry aren't tanky. You eat it and you die so fast. So the way that I found to use these cavalry is when I'm going long distances and I want a unit I will micromanage, then they're a good unit. Um, that is the only time where I'm really happy to have the ranged cavalry. Otherwise, I'm going to use my eagle cavalry unit over here. And you may think, Chiskul, this is a lot of talking about a, a faction that I'm not even using right now, but this is important to understand what your enemy's abilities are. OK, when your enemy brings eagles, that has a special charge like a regular cavalry unit from the other factions. The Spring Warden cavalry actually do something different entirely. They get an attack boost when they jump into combat. Physical keen, 30 percent for 10 seconds. Once every two minutes, they can do that. So they, they are really punchy once they jump into combat. But they also have way, way, way less physical base attack than regular cavalry units which is why a lot of people hate on the Spring Wardens. Now, this video is not about the Spring Wardens, so I'll probably leave it there for, for my advice to you about cavalry. I will simply add that if you're going to use them as a, you know, ranged unit in big fights, you need to micromanage that march or it will surge in front and it's going to die. And that sucks because when you micromanage your cavalry, you will get an absolutely stupid amount of merits doing the one thing that a cavalry are actually supposed to do, which is assassinating the back line opportunistically. And if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, throw a like on here and consider subscribing. If you want to see video where I'm pretty sure I have footage where I'm running around with, you know, cavalry assassinating in the back line, I'll have cards in the end screen in just a second. I hope you'll check them out.